Welcome to the Holistic Psychiatrist Podcast, a place for inspiration, insight, and information on holistic mental health. Join your host, Dr. Alice Lee, and discover critical information on safe, effective psychiatric medication withdrawal. Explore new ideas that enlighten and expand the mind with cutting-edge authors and experts, along with former patients as they share their miraculous healing journeys. It's time to build your well-being from the thought up. It's time for the Holistic Psychiatrist Podcast. Here's your host, Dr. Alice Lee. Hello and welcome to the Holistic Psychiatrist Podcast, a place for building well-being from the thought up. I'm your host, Dr. Alice Lee, the holistic psychiatrist practicing in Salt Lake City, Utah. For more information about my work and for free healing recordings, please check out my website, holisticpsychiatrist.com. And thank you so much for listening today. Today, our podcast is entitled Unfinished Business. Emily continues her healing journey. We'll be spotlighting Emily, who reached out to me to further discover any remaining deep-seated underlying issues that impeded her ability to continue her path towards fulfillment and well-being. What brought her back to further her healing, and what are the critical areas that must heal in order to succeed in sustaining long-term happiness, health, and fulfillment? Emily shares her continued efforts to create a vibrant life beyond her successful medication withdrawal the second time around. Thanks for being here today, Emily. I really appreciate your agreement. I really appreciate you agreeing to creating this podcast together. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay. All right. So for those who haven't listened to your first podcast, where you shared your quite miraculous healing process coming off your medications, Why don't we start with a little bit about yourself, your background, whatever you feel comfortable about sharing. Okay. Yeah. So I am currently 36 years old. I work as a photographer actually, and I've kind of bounced around a bit as far as where I've lived and and has had a pretty big impact on the experiences I've had. But my background as far as what we touched on last time I was on the podcast was the medication withdrawal. So I wrote it down here. I don't remember if these are all the medications, but they're the ones that I definitely remember. It was the, you helped me come off the Latuda, the Gabapentin, which were the most difficult, as well as Propranolol and Vyvanse. I feel like there may have been one other in there, but I, because I was off and on so many medications for years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I reached out. That was gosh, was that 2021? Maybe the first time I reached out, I was experiencing absolutely horrific withdrawals, just kind of couldn't function, had never dealt with any sort of, you know, suicidal ideation before, but trying to come off those, those medications, specifically the Latuda kind of threw me into the thralls of that. Couldn't regulate my body temperature, sweating constantly, just I mean, it was terror, absolute terror. Mm -hmm. And so it took us, I think, probably about a year and a half slowly kind of tapering off um, and was very successful in that. Mm -hmm. And during the course of me working with you then, I was able to kind of completely turn my life around for the better. I was able to, I was working when I first started my sessions with you and then eventually got to the point where I was able to work more full time and then quit the job that I had. I was working for a photography company because I wasn't happy there and decided to kind of branch out on my own. I was living with family at the time and then was able to get my own place and and start the kind of baby steps to start my own business. That's yeah, that's the background as far as where I was when I reached back out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, for those people who hadn't heard the first podcast, Can you remind us a little bit about what happened with that initial withdrawal? Like, why did you decide to withdraw? And did you try to do it on your own? Or or were you being guided by a conventional psychiatrist? What happened that got you in that place where you were really suffering from withdrawal? 
So it's a bit of a complicated story. I guess the the shortest version of it is that I um I was living in California. I was living in Southern California in Los Angeles when I started on the medications and went in for just ongoing depression and it was it was this battle of finding the right medication. So I think what we realized especially over the last almost year that I've been working with you again was that I was kind of being thrown in and out of withdrawal fairly frequently with coming on and off different medications. And I didn't really know what was going on. My my depression progressively got worse and worse and worse. I finally decided to move back home, which is the the Atlanta area for me. I just couldn't function anymore. Had no idea that it was the medication. And the first psychiatrist I saw thought that maybe the medications that I was on at the time because I was on Latuda but also an antidepressant I think at that point in time he tried a couple different antidepressants but he was putting me on and off those antidepressants very very quickly I think sometimes it was like a 2 to 4 week overlap in terms of coming off one going on the other and then I started I stopped seeing that psychiatrist. I kind of got to the point where I was scared of all psychiatrists. <laughs> and I started a um a uh, I did a lot of reading and I started kind of learning about integrative psychiatry or not even psychiatry, just integrative health, holistic health. And so I started trying to do some things on my own. I learned a lot about gut health. And so I tried a Candida protocol. which is when i realized that my blood sugar balance my uh, my um regulation yeah my blood sugar regulation played a big part in how i was feeling mm mm-hmm. and if i kept to a certain diet i felt a whole lot better i found an integrative psychiatrist who then agreed that the diagnosis i had didn't really make sense to him which was bipolar disorder mm-hmm. i initially had gone from just being really depressed to treatment resistant depression and then because i guess my understanding was that because she gave me that psychiatrist gave me the treatment depressed treatment depression diagnosis she was able to prescribe me latuda off label i don't know it was all very confusing for me but this psychiatrist did agree that the bipolar diagnosis didn't make sense that the latuda was doing more harm than good he also agreed that the vivance at that time because i was diagnosed with adhd at 27 28 somewhere in there in the long run would not be good for me so we started tapering quote unquote of the latuda and he was aware that there were some very rare cases that people had a difficult time coming off antipsychotics like latuda i don't think he had ever dealt with it before because when i started it we were going 20 dropping 20 mg every month or, or six weeks and i think it was when i went from 60 to 40 mg all the symptoms i kind of explained before started happening after a couple weeks they went away so we went from 40 to 20 and that's when it just i mean it was a nightmare and he didn't really know what to do i thought my life was over i couldn't get out of bed i he at that point wanted me to just kind of i think kind of wait wait it out and see but i was just in so much pain physically and emotionally psychologically and so i then just started scouring the internet for for ways to kind of safely come off of these medications there had to be a better way because if i didn't find a better way i didn't think i was going to survive i found some support groups on facebook and that seemed a little bit scary to me to try to do it on my own and then i think i came upon one of your articles from your blog and then i found your information and i reached out to you and immediately we went back up to 40 mg so i could just survive and then we we started tapering from 40 mg so maybe that way i said it that the shortest way to explain the story is still kind of a long story but it's like i said it's a bit of a complicated story no it's an important background and i think it's really important also for people to learn from your experiences because you know the first thing that we did is we needed to stop the withdrawal from hurting you that ba- badly not just white knuckle it and just wait it out because those mental health symptoms are signs that your physical body is suffering and so we we want to just minimize the withdrawal symptoms and that's why we went up on the medication yeah so 
I think that from what you've shared is that the psychiatrists try to use their toolbox of medications to help you over the years. And at some point, it just wasn't working very well for you. And they just kept using the same tools with medications, one medication after another, trying to find the right solution. But for you, the right solution wasn't just that toolbox of medications. So we're going to just kind of talk a little bit more about what really has led to not only coming off medications successfully, because they can listen to the first podcast and hear more about that. But this time around, I think what we want to talk about is focusing on not just getting off the variety of medications that you were taking and getting off of it and tapering off of it successfully, but going beyond that, you were looking for the ability to sustain good health and you were struggling with that this time around. So I would love for you to kind of, you know, share with the audience what were some of the issues you were struggling with a year later that led you to, you know, contacting me again? Yeah, I, um, so I, the way that I think I phrased it to you, the first session that I did with you again, was that I had really fallen off the bandwagon. One thing I forgot to mention before was that I also had quit smoking during that that withdrawal process coming off all of the medications, which had a huge positive impact on my mental health. So I think the first thing that sort of happened was I started smoking again, which led to feeling pretty terrible. So I stopped exercising, (laughs) which led to feeling even more terrible. And it was just kind of a spiral down. I started, I got to the point where I wasn't real great taking my supplements. And then it got to the point where I, you know, and this is over the course, I think of several months, because it was like the first six months or so after I got off all of the medications and completed my work with you first six months, somewhere around first six months were really great. So it was, you know, and then it was a sl- kind of a slow spiral from there. So it was the cigarette smoking, then the the exercise, of course, also poor, poor diet came with that and then supplements and quitting all my supplements. So that's kind of where I was when I when I reached back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been hard for you to reach out to me because you know that I was going to ask you all these hard questions. Are you taking your supplements? What are you doing? What gave you the courage to reach out to me, even though you felt probably bad about what had happened since, you know, our work together? So yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit nervous just because Mm -hmm. I wasn't nervous that you were going to be mad at me or upset with me. I just, you know, I think I dealt with a lot of not wanting people to be disappointed in me. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what I was most nervous about was that you were going to be disappointed or as, you know, because I I felt like I had done so well and then (laughs) I just (laughs) completely went off everything that I worked so hard to do. Uh So, and I'm sure we'll get into this later on. That was more internalized feeling disappointed in myself, Mm -hmm. something that I came to realize, but, but yeah, I was definitely nervous, but I just knew that I was at the point, like I I went back and reread that email that I sent to you and it was a very short email, but what I said in it was, you know, I, I recognize something along the lines of, I recognize that I am dealing with some sort of depression I think that I dealt with such severe depression for so long. It's kind of hard to recognize when it's more mild to moderate depression. And it went back to just the lack of motivation, feeling pretty terrible. And I think I said in there, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what's going on, but I just need a little bit of help with it. And it turns out, I I mean, it was more than just getting back on the wagon with all of that stuff. It was a lot more than just that. Like I thought that, you know, maybe we'd start supplements all over again and, and that'll be it. Like I would have been fine, but But very quickly, I realized there was a a lot more to it. And I knew that your insights the first time around had been incredibly helpful. I'm also very close to my family, my mom, especially she was my rock when I was kind of in, you know, just the worst place when during that withdrawal. And she even mentioned a couple of times, maybe you should reach out to Dr. Lee, like if you're really struggling this much. So I think it was once my mom said that I, you know, I was like, okay, so it's obvious enough that I'm struggling. (laughs) And I kept trying to kind of start things up again on my own, but falling back off. And I just, I think subconsciously, I recognized that there was more to it than just the supplements and just the nicotine and just, you know, 
the diet and exercise that there was that coming off all of the medication felt so great. And I was so proud of myself. It was very easy to overlook, you know, wait a second, why did all of this start to begin with? Why did you end up going on the medication to begin with? So Mm. I knew there was going to be stuff there that that we probably needed to address. I just I wasn't quite sure how much but (laughs) that there was (laughs) stuff there that needed to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And I I do find that within a year to two years for people who had focused mostly on the healing from being on medications and hadn't spent maybe as much time focusing lifestyle and identity issues, that it is hard to maintain long-term well-being. And definitely it's okay for people to return and work on those deeper issues. So initially when you came back, there was this kind of idea that you might just go back on the supplements and then that would be it. But obviously our healing journey, which began in October of 2023, and now it's almost a year, it's September of 2024, has encompassed a whole different way of approaching the healing process this time around, right? So I would love for you to share with our audience what kind of things we worked on this time around that has helped beyond medication withdrawal. Yeah, so there's been quite a few things. I think initially we were just talking about this that before doing the podcast, we were talking about one of the first things that I said, I think during the first session was that I felt that I was self-sabotaging. In my mind made sense because it made sense because I couldn't figure out why else I wouldn't just start up the supplements again and get back to where I was. It seemed like there was a blueprint there. It should be very easy to follow. But very quickly, I think through some of the questions you asked me in that first or second session, I realized that a lot of issues really stemmed from not only long-term medical issues that we had kind of addressed previously, like you said, but also just what I thought of myself, my identity as a person, the way that I grew up. And I had dealt with health issues for a very long time. And that was difficult for me to really recognize, you know, starting from a young age, maybe toddler to like five, six years old, starting somewhere in there, I dealt with a lot of ear infections and strep throat. I think we touched on this in the last podcast, but this came up again because it was important that pretty much my whole life, I mean, I was sick a lot as a child. Depression started kind of around middle school. I started with extreme, extreme pain during menses. Also, I think around middle school, definitely by high school. So my entire life was basically me fighting being sick one way or another. And that had a lot to do with the way that I, I think it had a lot to do with the way that I, I developed in, in how, you know, my coping mechanisms, the way that I thought about myself, the way that others viewed me. So that's, I think that was initially kind of our starting point. What I realized was what you, I think that what we were talking about that very first session, it wasn't necessarily so much self-sabotage. It was the way that I kind of saw myself. And I was looking at kind of the first three months because you always email the energy work to me. Mm -hmm. I was going back and looking at those first three months and I I wrote it all, or I copied and pasted it here in some notes. A lot of it had to do with like one of the big ones, releasing association with being sick, with being rewarded with love. I think that was one of the first big things that I recognized like, oh, when I, you know, as a young, young child, I, my parents were very, very busy parents, very busy parents. But when I was sick, It was, they were, you know, my mom would take off work and she was always there for me. And so it was almost like the subcon, and there were a lot of other reasons, you know, kind of there, but it was like, when I'm not doing well, it's like, I'm almost rewarded with this, this love that I felt like maybe I craved in all other areas of my life when I wasn't sick, but wasn't necessarily getting it. Not because my parents were bad parents, but they were extremely busy, busy parents. Mm -hmm. So it was things like that, that we worked on. I know just the, the kind of like the nurturing and attention that I didn't get growing up and what that kind of led to as I was a teenager and then going into adulthood. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are very powerful formative years growing up with a certain burden that you had to carry all all through the years. And it really created some limiting 
beliefs about what you can do, who you are. It probably undermined your trust in your body and in what you can promise other people and promise yourself. Because when you had your menses, sometimes your plans would fall apart because you would be in so much pain. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think with all the other stuff too, the depression and, and especially through the medication withdrawal, it was basically my entire adult life. I think I've said this a lot to you. I've just been waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, things might be going well, but in the past, it's like my brain and my body have been trained to know that mm -hmm. eventually something's going to happen. If it's pain, physical mm -hmm. or psychological, something is going to happen and you're going to fail which I saw as failing, you're going to fail again. So that was the constant kind of mm -hmm. constant fear as well too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of um, misunderstanding from adults as you were growing up. And I think some subconscious definitions or labeling of why you did what you did. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the labels that they gave you was that you were capable but you just didn't want to achieve. And so they thought of it as laziness. A lot of these types of, I guess, assumptions as you were growing up affected your self-esteem, right? It had a huge impact on my self-esteem. Yeah, I um, the thing I got told a lot by parents and teachers was you just don't apply yourself. You're so smart, you don't apply yourself. You're completely capable, you don't apply yourself. It was this, which I don't know that I directly heard the term lazy. I may have somewhere, I'm sure I did somewhere in there, you know, a teacher or parent or some, someone getting really frustrated. It was, but the constant was you don't apply yourself, which I translated in my head as being lazy as well. And also that I just probably couldn't succeed. I um, didn't feel like I could succeed because I don't apply myself. But I just, but then looking back, I just remember being exhausted my entire childhood, just absolutely exhausted all the time. So yeah, I think it, it was a misunderstanding. And as a child and even a teenager and young adult, you don't always necessarily have the, the capability, you know, you, you haven't learned yet how to communicate what's really going on with you and how it's affecting you in these different areas. I'm just learning in, you know, my 30s <laughs> how to kind of explain it. So for a child and teenager, that's a really difficult thing, I think, to have to go through. One of the energy sessions that we did, I think that led to a shift in your relationships is an energy session or healing session where we worked on you being seen or f feeling that you were seen that all your life you really didn't feel like anybody really saw who you were yeah definitely i think that was one of the more fairly recent ones that we did over the last several months. Yeah, because even as an adult, I think my sister, I think I think it came up because I was talking about a hike that I had gone on with my sister and the way that we were talking about, I mean, we were just kind of joking around about certain things, but she made some comments about the way that I, that I am as a person and the way that I was as a child that just, it kind of startled me in a good way that she said it. And I felt, wow, like I, I feel like my sister really sees me for who I am because I don't even think that positively of myself all the time. But also made me realize I don't think anybody else has ever really made me feel that way in my family or growing up, you know, friends. I'm sure that others have seen that in me, the, the positive things that my sister was mentioning. But I think that it was overshadowed by not feeling seen and understood so much growing up. Yeah. And even as yeah. an adult, yeah. Well, don't leave us curious. So what did your sister say that was really positive <laughs> about you? It's just weird to talk positively about myself still. But um, <laughs> it's we were talking about some experiences I had had that really made me sort of recognize that. I was telling her about some experiences that I had had where I really learned, like it felt it was really, it like kind of sat there with my soul almost to not take things so personally from people and to really recognize that everybody's going through something and you know, that, that it's almost like a mirror, the way that they're acting towards you. Um, and it was like some, it was just some profound experiences I had. And 
her reaction to it was just kind of like, oh, but I mean, I, I don't know that that just seems like how you've always been I just even remember because she's five years older than me I just remember as kids like if there was a kid that was upset you wanted to go over and help them and you always seemed like you were really empathetic towards people even as adults and with my nieces she was talking about with my nieces and they really like to come to you for this reason and you know she just was really it was really nice to hear her say that 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 she felt like I really see people and try to understand their pain or what they might be going through and try to help them. So yeah, it was, you know, it was big for me to hear mm -hmm. that from her. Yeah, it's it felt like she really saw some really wonderful qualities about you that you hadn't accepted about yourself. And I guess her words must have penetrated because you really heard her, you know, when she when she spoke. One of the things I really like about our work together is when we do our energy healing work, you can feel the energy, right? So yeah, yeah it, it, and it's kind of evolved over the years. But can you share with our audience um, how you began to start he feeling the energy, how it's evolved over time? And what what do you think about it? Like some of the things that happen when we do energy work? So it's been interesting and it doesn't, it doesn't happen every time as in like it can get more intense sometimes. But I, I think I remember the first time I mentioned it to you was that I had just, cause I'm always sitting when we're doing our sessions cause it's over zoom. And I, I guess the way that I was sitting, I had my palms facing up. I don't remember if they were on my lap or like, you know, where they were, but I just felt kind of very intense. How do I always describe it? Uh, like vibration kind of in my palms, not really tingling, but just kind of like vibrations. Like if you put your hand on a, like a dryer or some, you know, mechanical thing that just like a humming almost on my palms. But also there, there's times where depending on the type of energy work we're doing, if my eyes are closed for a significant amount of time, I'll see different colors, which is strange. I mean, it's, and it's not just colors. It's like pulsating or like tunnel tunneling or kind of like, even lately, they've started taking the shape of, I don't even know how to describe it. We've talked about this too, not having the words to describe certain things like this, but almost just beautiful kind of like floating, <laughs> I don't know, colorful beings, things. I'm not really sure what to call it, which is interesting because I normally, you know, when I try to visualize things or or if I'm meditating, all I see is black. Like if somebody says, you know, imagine an ocean, I close my eyes. I know what an ocean looks like. I can, I can think about what waves look like coming up on the beach, but I don't actually see anything. I don't see color. It's just always black. So more recently though, seeing those colors, even just, you know, the pulsating and the shapes has been really, really interesting. And as far as what do I think about it, I'm not really sure what I think about it. I think that if it had happened when we first started doing energy work, because I was open to energy work, I didn't really know anything about it. I was open to it. Did I think it was going to have any significant impact? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But I was open to it. I think had it happened then, it probably would have been pretty startling. But because even without the pulsating and the visual things that I've started getting, I was already seeing the results of the energy work. Now it just sort of feels like this might be kind of silly, but I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. Like I'm starting to get more in touch with it. But I think the, the kind of more profound re realizations I've had about the energy work happens before I started experiencing that. And maybe it's because I've started, I've started accepting it more and realizing how big of an impact it can have. And maybe that's why that started happening. I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, some other symptoms that tend to happen for a lot of people, I think, including you and I, is we tend to get teary, like tears will come up, we yawn. Sometimes stuffy noses will happen. That's sometimes, a big one for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes for people, especially with the infinite intention story form, there's going to be a lot of detox where people are having bowel movements quite frequently, even when they ha their diet hasn't changed that much. So there's actually 
like big changes like that. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one for me <laughs> that mm-hmm. I that I experienced maybe TMI, but yeah, it was just insane how it can have an impact on you like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, there's always typically something. And for a long time it was just kind of yawning and like I said it was a big one for me the stuffy nose, but mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So I would love for you to just share whatever you want to share about some of your achievements this time around, some of your successes, what have you noticed in terms of progress as, you know, as we've used our tools to help you heal this time around. So I think the biggest thing for me was I recognized that there was still a huge lack of confidence. I think that's where a lot of this also stemmed from a lot of this, that there was a huge lack of confidence. And that was part of that, you know, idea of self sabotage, which as we realized, wasn't necessarily the case that it was self sabotage. But I've noticed that my confidence has just really grown pretty exponentially over the last, like we said, almost a year. And I think a lot of that just comes from recognizing where a lot of my issues kind of stemmed from starting at an early age and the energy work that we've done to kind of help that. But also beyond the energy work, just some a lot of times the discussion around it. I think that you've been really helpful and you know you've you've helped me a lot in discovering what these issues are, like what, oh, maybe this was had an a domino a domino effect here. And I think for myself and I'm sure for a lot of people, It's just so helpful recognizing why things are the way that they are or, you know, why you have reactions to certain things, why you've lost your confidence, why, you know, you feel certain ways about yourself. So just that little bit of knowing why it is the way that it is, is very helpful. And then being able to do energy work that really has an impact on it is just sort of sometimes like the icing on top of the cake. So I went from really having gone, when I first got my own place, I was really just a homebody, almost like a recluse, um, which was not how I was before I went through the whole medication journey. I was very social, very active, but it was like I was almost scared of people (laughs) at this point. You know, I still, I had no problem talking to people when I went to the grocery store or, you know, there were certain friends that I still would go spend time with, but I felt I was having a difficult time connecting to people. And I think there was some fear kind of associated with that still that people wouldn't maybe understand me or like we're talking about see me. So that was something we worked on too, even through energy work was finding the right kind of people and attracting the right kind of people and being seen. It wasn't just that one session we did on being seen. I think, I think that was something that we continued to work on. And, you know, I've now gotten out and started trying new things you know there was there's a writing class that I'm taking and have met some really cool people there and just a couple different things have got me out and about and connecting with people where I do feel kind of seen so my confidence has grown there in who I am as a person and in our last session we were talking about kind of habits and I think that this will be an ongoing process that you know it's, I've recognized now that if I do fall off the wagon, uh, it's sort of like my body lets me know when we're kind of getting there so that I can, I can get back on sooner. And instead of getting down on myself, I just sort of recognize that, as you've said many times, you can't expect to like change overnight when you've spent years and years, even decades doing things a certain way. So creating these new habits and sort of integrating them so that they are really just a part of you, these healthy habits that you not only want to do them, but it's just second nature to do them. I think that's an ongoing, I think that is an an ongoing thing. I think I will still be spending quite a time working on integrating those healthy habits, but it really is night and day from where it was when I first reached back out to you to where I am now. I'm feeling more confident. I'm not waiting for the other shoe to drop anymore either, (laughs) which is good. So that's a big thing. Well, I I noticed you're very modest about all your successes and achievements. So I'm going to just introduce a few things that you left out. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So you got your own house. You're now living in your own house. Um, You did a lot of work renovating it and you built your own photo studio. 
Mm-hmm. And you're, you started your own business. You have healed tremendously from the horrible pain that you would suffer every month with menstrual cramps that would sometimes send you to the ER. You have quit smoking. Um, and nowadays, uh, occasionally you might use a nicotine lozenge or at least part of one, but you've healed from the cravings for nicotine. And right now, sometimes you might have a little bit of nausea, but then, you know, it's not so much the cravings anymore for nicotine. So that's really changed in terms of your use. You have regained your energy in, in so many different ways so that you can go out and do activities with your nieces now and with your sister, go hiking. Whereas before you didn't have the energy to do that. Let's see what else. Your attention and focus is so much better. So you can accomplish things. Yeah. Motivation is there. So I'm just kind of like thinking of different things that you've been able to accomplish in so many different areas. But tell me, share with us more about the things that I brought up, you know? Yeah, it I mean, it's interesting how easy it is to forget unless you really sit down and think and kind of reflect back about how much you can accomplish in a year. So there really has been a lot, I guess. So yeah, I mean, the intention was when I first got my own place, the the house that I'm living in now to have the photography studio here, I have a detached, there was a detached garage that was just a wood shop. And that was a battle in itself too. I think that's part of what left me feeling defeated when I first reached out to you again was because it was just obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. But yeah, I am at the point now where I'm about to open the books um, to have clients on the books. And so that's really great. I learned a lot (laughs) about DIY type projects. But when I yeah, when I first reached out to you, I had no energy to do any of that. And the motivation was really it, it had gone again, because of all the things that we've we've talked about so far. And that I think that was that's been one of my biggest struggles in my life is feeling that there's a lack of motivation, which a lot of times it is the underlying health issues. It is the you know, underlying the the things that we think about ourselves that aren't they're they're more subconscious. So that's big. The um the is huge. The 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 fact that I think I've been through since May and it is now September has been, as I've told you, it's the easiest. There's there's been some cycles where it was ac- completely pain free, no pain whatsoever. Maybe some mild kind of cramps, but that's about it. Um, so that. And I think that's helped give me a lot of confidence too, because I didn't want to make plans during (laughs) certain times of the month, just in fear that I'd end up in, in so much pain and a lot of guilt associated with that because I live an hour away from my parents, but I would have to call them down to go to the, to take me to the ER. So it's just, it feels very freeing. I think we even had a session where I told you, I don't know how to feel about this. It feels weird to think that I'm really am moving towards kind of a pain-free life because that has had such an impact on me since I was a teenager. The other thing too, is that we had stopped our work together because I wanted you to follow through with a, a functional OBGYN doctor. Yes. And yeah. Uh, And I didn't want, I didn't feel like I specialized in that area. And so I wanted you to kind of work with that individual and see if your, the hormonal issues could be resolved through that channel. But after a year, it didn't seem like things had improved that much. Um, So we built from the foundation that that functional doctor had created And then we just did some additional supports and with the energy work and with the additional supports, I think we've made a lot of progress in a year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I had, I was still pretty much where I was at. I think when we stopped back in 2020, the end of 22. Yeah, there really hadn't been a lot of improvement. And then beyond my issues with the pain, it was also the gut issues, the acid reflux, because I was, and that was something that the functional, that that particular functional doctor was also trying to help me on. And I think that's where we kind of built on. We just took some of the, the gut stuff and then we added a lot of the stuff that you do for gut health. Um, because I went from, that was also pretty miserable. I could drink water sometimes and get acid reflux. And now I think I 
told you recently, unless I eat something really, really terrible, like pizza with fried chicken, with, you know, spaghetti and, and acidic, some sort of acidic food, like tomato sauce thrown in there or something, I'm, I'm really don't have those gut issues anymore and the acid reflux. And I don't know how that happened. Um, I do kind of wonder if some of this stuff that that functional doctor had put me on, because I never dealt with acid reflux before, put me on, I, you know, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know where it came from, but it was, that has pretty much healed too. So mm-hmm. really good. I think we did some pretty intense energy work for the pain though, for the cramps. And it, I think it was after one of my ER visits because I did, they wanted me to go see a OBGYN and talking to that OBGYN, we kind of, you know, I kind of learned some new things about what might be going on. So we did some pretty big energy work that shifted things. And I think it was the next cycle. I was just like, I don't know what's going on, but I haven't had any pain. This is crazy. So, Mm. yeah. We also switch you from vitamin D with K to just pure vitamin D. And I think there was some research that we did that showed that vitamin D was very important for some of the modulation of the hormonal components, molecules Mm -hmm. uh, that would decrease the pain. Mm -hmm. And I think that that also helped as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So we're nearing towards the end of our podcast. The towards the end, uh, the, the one question I wanted to ask you was what was the most important thing you learned this time around? It's a tough question. I think the most important thing that I, I think the most important thing that I learned was that I really can trust myself and trust my intuition about a lot of different things. I think that's kind of been there where I, you know, I, I, I follow my intuition, follow what I think that my body is telling me, but I think that I've really learned that I, I can completely trust it now. If Mm -hmm. that makes, if that makes sense, um, that I, that I should listen to it when it's giving me signals and stuff. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Of all of the different things that you learned, it's interesting that that to that is the most important because if you can trust yourself and you can trust your intuition, it means that you have the resource with you all the time. You're not tied with an apron string to anybody else telling you what to do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely. Good. And the last question I have for you is, do you have any last words of advice to the audience? Anything that you think that they would really benefit from, you know, your experiences, anything you want to share with them? It is just, I think the thing that I had to keep reminding myself towards the beginning of this, which you, I think you kept reminding me of, is that it does take time to heal things. And I think you have to be patient with yourself and give yourself grace and, you know, allow yourself to rest when you need rest and, and just kind of know that if you keep pushing through and keep fighting and just always get back up, you know, I've fallen many, many times, but if you keep getting back up, you know, you can get to wherever it is that you desire to get in your, in your health or in your, with your health or in your life, that it's when you're dealing with stuff like this, uh, you know, it's it's not necessarily an easy an easy road ever, and there are times that you can feel like you've overcome a lot, but fall back a little bit. Just keep going forward. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So wow, that's great. That's uh, advice about compassion, compassion for yourself. Yeah, self compassion. Yeah, if we can have that compassion for ourselves, I think the whole world would benefit because we can share that compassion with other people so much yeah. more easily. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece of advice. I think that from my perspective as a clinician who has worked with you twice now, one of the things that I have really admired about you is your persistence and your willingness to keep getting back up and trying to find the answers. You had huge amounts of pain, exhaustion, debilitating symptoms that interfered with your cognition, your motivation, your ability to control your life, your emotions, but you just kept going and you kept trying to find answers for yourself. One of the things that uh, has been consistent for you 
is your perseverance in looking for information online and trying to figure out what are the root causes? What can I do to help myself more naturally? And oftentimes you'll come to me and you'll say, I've read this article or I found out something like this from the OBGYN and we would kind of delve into it a little bit more, find some more information that's relevant and apply it. It's almost like learn as we go kind of thing and they have been extremely helpful for you. So I would say that if there's anything that I I would say is that innate intelligence can be overshadowed by illness But when a person is innately intelligent, it will still shine through despite the illness because that mind is constantly trying to figure out alternative ways to get what it needs and what it wants, right? In your situation, it was your health. You wanted your life back and you didn't give up. So I think your potential is still, you know, unfolding and blossoming in your life. And I think that we're just at the place where we can see some of that beauty just manifesting itself. But I I also think that it's always been there all along, that it had been kind of overshadowed and blanketed over by so many different things that prevented uh, you from understanding yourself and other people from understanding you. But now as we lift those layers of illness away, uh, we are starting to see who Emily has always been, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. And I I do think that I really feel that. I feel, like I said, for the first time, I don't feel like the sh- I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. And it just feels like my life really is starting to kind of begin the way that I've always wanted it to. So, yeah. And, and you know, you're just in your 30s. You're very young and you have a lot of experiences experiences that you can fall back on for your wisdom, you know, in life. Yeah. So yeah. don't think of those years that where you've suffered as lost years. They are years where you can go back and you know, dig for more pearls of wisdom, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your experiences and insights today, Emily. I appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) For those of you who had listened and have been enjoying our podcast, I hope you liked what you heard. Please subscribe to this podcast for more helpful information and give this podcast a positive rating. I hope you'll subscribe to my website as well for my newsletters, holisticpsychiatrist.com. There's a contact section if you are interested in working with me on my website, you'll see a section for the podcast as well. So you can access the podcast there. But there are a lot of there are a lot of wonderful articles. There's I have a YouTube link with lots of free healing recordings as well. And of course, links to all my social media platforms. I will admit I'm not much of a social media person, even though I do post there. So if you want to reach me, please just contact me, uh, go to my website, to the contact section and contact me there. I'll get your message right away and I'll respond as soon as I can. If you do wish to integrate high quality nutritional supplements that are absorbable and are medicinally helpful, I would recommend uh, registering for Fullscript's uh, free online dispensary and it helps to keep you supplied with the industry's largest catalog of professional grade supplements available on my website under the products tab. So if you go to the products tab and you look for full script, you can sign up under my under me as a provider and then you can access some of those supplements as well as uh, some of the supplements I typically use for my patients. So I look forward to sharing more insights with you through podcasts and articles and hope you'll thrive as you build your life from the thought up. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.